apologize. It's not your fault that the bathrooms are all the way over here. It's not your fault. One. Small price she paid. Afraid he would send her back across the desert through the river. Her body shivers, but she keeps silent. Only sounds of the palpitations of her heartbeat and the heaviness of his breath. As he tears her, we beat and rips open her dress, face down, pressed to the ground behind the back of his pickup truck. She prays through her tears, hoping La Virgen will hear her pain. His perspiration is poison that stains her skin. And with every penetration, he pushes deeper within. Her 14-year-old body bruised, accused of being a spick, a wet bat, a dirty Mexican whore, espalda mojada, and one more señorita extraviada. Two. Inside freight containers, she is smuggled like merchandise. The price for her life? Negotiable, her spirit disposable in free trade, makes her a commodity sold in cash and stashed in downtown empty, run down buildings where the windows are boarded to keep out the sun. She is not the only one. There are many like her, but she is alone and so far from home. It is a distant dream. Now she sold hens and seeds behind industrial machines in the hopes to one day buy back her freedom. A freedom she will never afford because the cost of room and board per day is more than she makes in a week's pay. Unable to save herself from poverty, she is a seamstress enslaved in a desolate room making garments for Nike and Fruit of the Loom. Three. She looks through the man's section of a department store at Fox Hills Mall for a pair of jeans that will fit her petite shape, sometimes wishing she could escape, leave her gender behind, and not have to go back upstairs to the fitting room for women only. If only the store employees would stop staring in shock, because she doesn't fit in their social box. She is nor woman nor man. She is something they simply can't understand. So they fear that her existence is a threat to their idea of what a woman should be or what a man could be, and her presence provokes what begins as a joke and ends in an empty parking lot on a Tuesday at dawn as a gun is drawn by the off-duty security officer calls her a bitch, a cunt, and a dyke. Black woman and queer is already three strikes. Four. <sighs> he was the illest poet MC. So I took home his chapbook and his CD. He was my first. And every time his hand hit my face, replaced and embraced with that, beatboxing was his strength. Said he was born with a gift, but he promised to resist raising his fist at me again. He said the bruising would heal and I would feel better tomorrow once the swelling disappeared. He said he would write me a poem so sincere about how beautiful I was. And with words of regret, he would write that poem that made me forget his hooks were a threat I succumbed to in denial, and I lost consciousness every time he battled me in freestyle, using a bag of frozen fruit to prevent irritation. The aftertaste of his verse left lasting impressions on my body, metaphors so thick they infected my soul, wounding me with alliterations while using imagery to console the pain so I would stay longing the beauty on his page would rise and reach me. The similes in his ciphers prolonged melodies of hope within me, so I stayed. Listened to his tracks imprinted on my self-esteem. A live recording of his anger on my dreams. I stayed for too long to remember the music to my own song. Three. 